last couple of days, a few teachers, a uh, few students, very kindly came up to me and were inquiring about ICANN, who we are, what we do, where are we headed, what is our vision. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to uh, reintroduce ourselves to you more wholesomely, if I may. Uh, so may I? We don't have to do this. We can straight jump into the award ceremony. Can I take five minutes here? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll tell you a little story from my life to set the context here. Before I say anything, a big disclaimer. I'm going to be very honest and very candid here. I do not intend to disrespect or malign any individual or institution. Okay. <laughs> this is not about Wellum, so it's okay. Don't worry. Um, but yes, I will put that disclaimer. I, I went to Doon and I loved the education there. And then I graduated and then I went to college in India. And I was completely horrified to witness what I saw. Now again, I'm reiterating here, I am deliberately not taking the name of the college because my intention is not to malign any one particular college. I'm talking about a broader concept here. My horror was Guys, please, my horror was more about a lot of, I think, largely the Indian undergraduate space across the country because I travelled pretty extensively across colleges for debates to meet friends generally and what I, what I saw in my college, I was pretty much seeing the same thing in most other colleges. Of course, there are some pockets that work very well in our country but largely speaking, ma'am is agreeing with me when I say that the Indian undergraduate space was just very, very messed up when I saw it, 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 was, it was very upsetting. Professors wouldn't come to class many times. Even when they did, the classroom discussion, if at all, was anything but stimulating. There was rampant cheating happening in exams. I remember literally the murmurs were so loud in my exams, I had to turn back and tell my friends to please take it easy because I was not being able to concentrate on my exam. There were friends of mine who had micro Xeroxes of entire books in the palm of their hands and were copying down answers. Rampant substance abuse. I'm sorry, I'm being very candid. And violent student politics. I was very intrigued. Everything that an educational environment should not be was happening there. And I got very intrigued. I started learning more, observing more, talking to a lot of people, educationists. And mind you, my reservations are not only restricted to the Indian undergraduate space. Uh, by all means, all of these glimpses of our educational failures that I've talked about um, are more executive in nature. But even if I were to shift the conversation to a more pedagogical tangent, even if I were to talk about the K-12 space since we're standing in a school here, I think all of our teachers will agree. Ma'am and I, Principal Ma'am and I were having a conversation the other day when Ma'am was highlighting her own set of reservations. I believe Ma'am's TEDx speech is also about similar issues. It's yet to come online. But I think all of our teachers will agree that largely the Indian education space is painfully old and archaic and is literally hanging by the fingers on the periphery of the global educational landscape fighting for relevance. I have a huge set of unanswered questions and reservations. I mean K-12, right? Kindergarten to class 12. That's K-12. Why 12 years of education? Why not 11? Why not 13? Why this obsessive stress on the math and science of things? I mean, I completely understand, please don't get me wrong. I completely agree that math and science and everything else is very, very important. I'll go to the extent of admitting that they are necessary. But here's the thing. They are necessary, but insufficient conditions for success in today's world. In my very limited opinion, I'm no educationist, but subjects like human psychology, spirituality, uh, life skills and soft skills like leadership quotient, public speaking, communication skills, listening skills, conflict resolution, physical education should form a very integral, central, primary part of a child's education where currently, for the large part of the country, they are only supportive in nature, if at all they are present. I can, I can keep going on and on, but the point of it is this, that this stunted education system of ours is creating, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be very harsh here, but is creating, to a large extent, incomplete, incapable, to a very great extent, incompetent personalities. We are creating followers, not leaders. There was this cartoon that uh, I read. I'm forgetting the name. Um, there are these four central characters in it. One's an American, one's a Brit, no offense. One's a Chinese, and one's an Indian. 
and they all represent the stereotypes that we attach to these cultures and I completely agree with them because the Indian that they show in that cartoon is this super intelligent guy who is great at the math and science of things, he's a brilliant coder, very smart but at the end of the day he goes to the American and says yes sir to the American who's his boss. Now the American may not be as savvy with numbers as the Indian is but his leadership quotient and his life skills and soft skills are so high and so profound that he's the boss and the Indian is the employee. And the consequences of our education system are not just restricted to this, there are some graver consequences here. We're creating armies and armies of people with degrees but those that are not employable. Just a few years ago, I don't know how much you read about these things, but McKinsey released a study about how 90% of engineers in our country graduating from our country's engineering colleges are not employable. Right? You've read this, right? I'm a business student and I can tell you this, those of you coming from business families will know, businesses across the country, across sectors, across industries, are constantly crying about how they do not have enough skilled and capable manpower. And the irony of the situation is that at the same time, there are millions and millions of young Indians holding degrees, looking for jobs and not getting any. There is obviously this fundamental mismatch here. There's obviously something fundamentally flawed about our education system. And this should not be taken lightly because this is nothing short of a ticking time bomb. Please, ladies, note that India is home to the world's largest youth population. And if, this, if the potential of this population is not harnessed well, if it is harnessed well, then this could create for our country and for the world a great unprecedented demographic dividend. But if not harnessed well, this potential demographic dividend can quickly convert into a demographic disaster. Just imagine, Millions and millions and millions of young people with a lot of energy, with a lot of dreams, just like yours and mine, with a lot of ambition, with a lot of degrees, with a lot of aggression, but no jobs. It's a scary situation. It's things like these that have the dangerous potential to scale up into social economic unrest, civil wars, even terrorism. I can keep going on and on about this. I've not even touched upon a lot of other issues, but for paucity of time, the long and short of it is this. Education in our country is nowhere close to what it could and should be. I think Mang will agree. And we, much like a few other people, are trying to do something about it. And in this endeavor, I would humbly request for the blessings of our seniors who have years of extensive experience behind them. And I humbly invite the youth of our nation to join forces with us. Because ladies and gentlemen, we're no more a fledgling nation emerging from the ruins of slavery. We're an independent, powerful nation that has come of age and must therefore take responsibility for its own future as an emerging global superpower. And at this defining juncture, ICANN represents the youth of our nation that's going to be the future of our country. ICANN is the voice of our youth and this voice is proudly proclaiming that we are declaring war. We're at war with the pitiful celebration of mediocrity that exists in our education system today. We're at war with the potential demographic disaster. We're at war with the potential demographic disaster that our country is heading towards unless something about it is done now. We're at war with the murder of the dreams of millions of young people who are not even skilled enough to get themselves a decent job. We're at war with the rape committed by the rapist who is not even wholesomely educated and sensitized enough to understand the gravity of the consequences of his heinous crime. We're at war. We're at war, ladies, with the helpless acceptance of a humiliating status quo and a suffocating reluctance to change. We're at war with a pathetically uneducated society that is patriarchal and refuses to respect its women. We're at war with all of these forces. We're at war with all of these forces. We're at war with all of these forces and more that are coming in the way of our great nation and keeping it from realizing its true potential. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not just a conference, we're not just a concept, we're a movement, we're a school of thought, we're an army, we're ICANN, and we are at war. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We love your support in what we do. Thank you. 
Thank you. It's very, very kind of you.